New Commissioner Rob Manfred has wasted no time leaving his mark on the game. And more changes are coming. See how the players feel about pace of play. And for the first time in almost two decades, Derek Jeter is not in camp. Find out how the Yankees and the league are adjusting to life without the captain. All that and more as we take you inside the Grapefruit League. Welcome to WEBN's Inside the Grapefruit League 2015. I'm Ashley Allen. And I'm Mike Canalupo. One of the hottest topics in baseball right now is the pace of play. New Commissioner Rob Manfred said he wants to shorten the length of games to appeal to the younger generation. And they're already starting to make some changes. One of the options that's being explored is the use of a clock. Starting this year, minor league games will be using a 20-second pitch clock to speed up the time between each pitch. But how do players feel about these changes? Mike Lucas found out whether or not they think it's good for the game. Baseball games are taking longer than ever, and new MLB commissioner Rob Manfred is doing everything he can to speed them up. Let's face it, if, if you're a family or if you're you know, on a date, whatever it is, a two hour and 30 minute game is more appealing than sitting through a three hour and 30 game. The new rules include limiting on-field meetings and fining players who step out of the batter's box. They're even experimenting with a pitch clock in the minors. However, not everyone has noticed the change. Oh, I don't even pay attention to it. I only have looked at it once. It's not necessarily the pitchers who are holding up the games, though. A lot of times it's the hitters taking a break between every pitch. A possible solution is, you know what, the clock's at zero, you're free to pitch. And if the batter's not in there, the first time a pitcher throws a strike and now all of a sudden the count's 0-1 and, and the batter hasn't even stepped in the box, that problem will be eliminated by itself. The batter will be in the box and be ready. Major League Baseball may be trying to speed the game up, but most players and managers don't think these new rules will have much of an impact on the game itself. It doesn't affect me that much. Um, in between innings, I warm up pretty quick and, and I'll tend to really take my time in between pitches. Really to the biggest change you see is in between innings with just the clock and being able to get out on the field quickly, which, uh, you know, it's not changing the integrity of the game, which is a good thing. Over the past five years, the average length of a baseball game has increased by almost 20 minutes. But those working at the ballpark don't seem to be the ones complaining. I think the people that are worried about the pace of play don't go to the games very often. The, the people that are here every day, the players, the umpires, the managers, the coaches, and the broadcasters, we like being at the ballpark. If all goes according to plan, Manfred's new rules could be in the major leagues next season. For WEBN, I'm Mike Lucas. This year marks the first in over two decades that Derek Jeter will not be wearing pinstripes on opening day. Now, while Jeter was the captain of the Yankees, many of his peers considered him to be the captain of Major League Baseball. With Jeter gone, it's time for baseball to usher in a new face of the game. From Giancarlo Stanton down in Miami to Big Poppy in Boston or Mike Trout in L.A., there are a handful of options to fill the void left by the Yankees legend. But who will step up to the plate? Anthony Chase asked players to answer that very question. Let's preface it by saying nobody will ever be Derek Jeter. Whether you rooted for him or against him, Derek Jeter was the face of Major League Baseball. With his retirement, the winner of the next face of baseball is... Mike Trout. You know, I would say Teixeira. You got Bryce coming up. Tulowitzki. Mike Trout. Buster Posey. Clayton Kershaw. All right, so maybe there isn't a clear-cut winner this season, but what can make one face stand out in a sea of superstars? Many say Mike Trout, but not just for his ability to swing the bat. You know, I think one of the young guys you can look at now is Mike Trout, who's just kind of got that kind of charisma where, where he's going out there and just playing a game, and, and uh, he looks like he has fun out there. Mike Trout still has that great smile. He's the best player in the game. He's still got such an aw shucks, I can't wait to play today attitude. And that's what I think baseball needs more than anything else, is a normal guy is the face of baseball. Sometimes the game of baseball knows when it has a face. Just look at the farewell tour extravaganza of Derek Jeter last season when every team felt an obligation to pay tribute to the Yankee shortstop. You know, Jeter was, was one of a kind. You know, he was a great leader and, uh, you know, the team captain of baseball. So, uh, 
you know, it's going to be tough to follow follow his his steps, but you know people are going to have to go up there and play baseball and show the game. You know what we got. There's again a few guys that can certainly fill that void, but let's see who who kind of takes the lead on that and and who becomes a true uh, baseball top uh, ambassador. Jeter racked up nearly 3,500 hits, but what really hit Torrey Hunter was the way he played the game. Man, Jeter was one of a kind. You know, he was a true professional. You talk about a guy who played in New York, you know, one of the toughest places to play and uh, as far as media-wise. And this guy, he kept his nose clean. He was always, you know, there for, in front of the camera, uh, played the game the right way. There's not too many guys out there that can be like Jeter. So, but the face of, of, of baseball right now it might, might be Mike Trout. It might be Trout, but the true face of baseball isn't born overnight, and you might not even know who he is until he's not on the field anymore. In Florida, Anthony Chase, WEBN. The New York Yankees are in uncharted territory. Expectations entering the 2015 season are low, and they're projected to finish near the bottom of the American League East. The core four is gone, so where do the Yankees go from here? Lucas Frankel was at Yankees camp to get a feel for the state of the franchise. The captain is gone, so the Yankees have been forced to move on without Derek Jeter. It's different. It's different for sure. Um, Jeter, I mean, obviously the greatest leader of all time, um, and he'll be missed. But you know, we got to keep pushing forward. We so we have the season to get ready for, and um, you know, we got to get ready with the guys we have. I think it will really hit you when the season starts. Um, you know, I think I noticed it really just on the spring training road games like this. It's kind of like there's been this in years past where if Derek Teeter isn't here, it's like the Yankees didn't show up. Former Yankees trainer Gene Monahan still can't get over the fact Jeter is no longer in the Yankee clubhouse. And I think about that pretty much each morning and each evening when I start the day and end the day. And uh, you keep looking around out there at shortstop and looking for number two and you don't see him. You look for his antics in the clubhouse, which were very quiet but very poignant. And you look for his smile and his good times. And, uh, and even during the tough times, he was always there supporting everyone, young and old. We miss that. Even though the captain is gone, the Yankees are confident they have the necessary pieces to get the job done. We'll make the adjustments, and uh, Didi Gregorius is uh, number one in the line there. I think he has good ability, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play there. There are still a lot of veterans here, so I, mean, I don't think they're stepping into Jeter's place. I think there are people here who are going to take on some leadership roles, and we probably had some of that in the past. Yankees general manager Brian Cashman even said he thinks Derek Jeter should be the team's last captain. Reporting from Sarasota, Lucas Frankel, WEBN. For the second time in three years, the Red Sox finished at the bottom of the AL East in 2014. Since then, the team has undergone a big transformation both on offense and defense. The Sox lineup is projected to be among the best in baseball, in large part because of the additions of Pablo Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez. And after losing out on the John Lester sweepstakes, general manager Ben Sherrington reworked the entire pitching rotation by acquiring Rick Porcello and Wade Miley, just to name a few. Ashley was in Fort Myers this week and had the chance to meet with some of the newest faces of Red Sox Nation. The Boston Red Sox have hit a home run with some new additions to the roster. How has spring training been going for you guys so far? We're doing great. We're doing great for me, you know, especially on your team. It's a side to be part. Last year, veteran third baseman Pablo Sandoval won the World Series with the San Francisco Giants, and he's hoping to bring that kind of success to Boston. Try to do the best that I can out there, you know, try to make the fans happy. You know, try to bring a lot of championships to this team. That's one of the things that, that I try signing here because they had a good team. So, But that wasn't true last season when the Sox finished at the bottom of the AL East. But Sandoval and fellow newcomer Hanley Ramirez believe this year's team can win. That's that's the main thing that I was looking for in the, in the offseason, you know, to go to, to a winning team. 15 years ago, Hanley Ramirez began his major league career with the Sox. And after nine years away, he's back. Happy, happy. I can't wait to, you know, my first at bat at Fenway. I found the best, you know, fans of the world, and uh, it's going to be great. And this time, the Sox are not letting him go. In November, Ramirez signed a contract that will keep him in Boston for the next four years. It's great, man. He worked really hard. He wanna, he, he, he's very excited of being here, being part of the organization that first signed him. He's very, he's very well motivated. But Ramirez and Sandoval add more than talent to the starting lineup. You know, chemistry is a big part of our success and, you know, what we have. And, you know, those guys are fun. They're just going to add to the, you know, the comedy act of, of, of what we are as a team. But, you know, we go out there and have fun doing it. 